Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup and the Linux Edition. These are recorded live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to catch the show live, go ahead and do that. And if you just want to catch the uh, edited versions, hey, we do the edited versions here as well. And on the Linux News today, we have all sorts of fun things from Debian. We got a, uh, a fork of a major web server. We got some new phone software and yeah, some more things going on with Snap. If only somebody had warned us properly about Snap a long time ago. Oh, I'm sorry I did that. I was accused of spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And I don't think anything I ever said about Snaps ever uh, failed to eventually come true. All right, so let's go ahead and start on M. Debian Bookworm uh, 12.5 is released, 68 bug fixes, 42 security updates. The big one here is the patch to the recent uh, GNU C library. So this is the glibc library. We talked about this. Um, I it was, can't remember if we did it on the Linux news or if it was on our regular weekly news roundup security section. But this was a pretty big vulnerability. It affected nearly every Linux distribution. And this is a package used for the basis of all applications in almost every Linux system. And so this version of Debian fixes it. Of course, that's been packed, backported. Most distributions have fixed it by now. There is a massive warning about this. If you have not upgraded um, to uh, Demia 12.5 yet. If you are using NVIDIA, do not upgrade without having a very good recovery strategy. Uh, there is a problem with this kernel and with NVIDIA, and so we are having issues. So uh, as Dan said last night, uh, Debian's been having some weird issues going on. They like so far out of the from 12.0 to 12.5, two of the versions have had some major issues. Now, uh, this was reported over here on the forums. Warning problems with incoming kernel update 610 to 118 and the NVIDIA drivers. And so the problem here, of course, is that these drivers are causing some... Uh, it's There's a plugin required for the NVIDIA drivers that is not working. There does appear to be a fix in the next point release. So um, if you use... Um, Bookworm proposed updates inside of your sources, and then you patch the upgrades, then um, you'll get all sorts of fun, crazy stuff going on as their proposed upgrades, but you might also get that fixed to NVIDIA. So if you are struggling with this and you do want to use this latest kernel, uh, then go ahead and, and run that proposed updates from the forum. Of course, all of these notes are in the link in the description. That'll take you to the website, which has all of the weekly news roundup links on the page. So other things, there's just a lot of uh, basic updates. We have uh, Cinnamon 568. We have Matei 126, LXQT 1.2, XSCE 418, GNOME 43.9, Plasma 527. So there's uh, just a number of other updates that you can see inside of that. We just want to make sure that we had that warning out for everybody and what that was about. For you running custom ROMs on your phone, Lineage 21 is out based on Android 14. This does see a change of a couple of apps and a redesign of the main core open source apps to do uh, matching based on the current, uh, current look of Android. They are changing one of the, uh, let's see, which one was it? Uh, there's so many things going on over here. I think it's the, uh, the, uh, gallery app is changed to a different app by default now. Pretty much everything else is much the same. Of course, you can head on over to the Lineage website and you can see which devices are going to be currently supported. Look at this, Walmart. There's Walmart phones you can put Lineage on. What? Oh, an Onbox? You can put, we can put Lineage on an Onbox? Dude, that sounds like a fun project. I'm going to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, I run the Razer, so uh, I can actually get this on my Razer 2 if I wanted to. Uh, I'm not going to right now. I, mean, I prefer to kind of keep my phones uh, how they are. But you can go ahead and see which uh, phone models are currently supporting Lineage. So for those that are looking at that, you can go ahead and consider running Lineage in the latest version based on Android 14. 
And then we had, this is a weird one. And this caused a lot of people scratch their heads. I had to read it three or four times to like, wait, 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 hold on. Who has a problem with this? Wait, what's going on? So Nginx, which did surpass Apache to become the most popularly used web server. I still usually use Apache unless there's a niche application that I use Nginx. Uh, so it just kind of depends on what I'm doing. But there's a problem where Nginx itself uh, was, it was Russian. It was purchased by an American company. They had a Russian satellite until the invasion of Ukraine. And then they shut that down. And that was F5. And they laid off all the people. Well, one of the core developers of Nginx, he was working on it as a pure volunteer after the shutdown of the company in Russia. And because of that, he, you know, he was doing a lot of things mostly for free. And then the company, oh, so F5 is a Seattle-based company. Uh, they came down and they started making some more demands about how code is patched in. And so what he is decided he was going to do is he's like, I completely disagree with their model and their methodology. So he decided to leave the project. He forked Nginx into a new application, free Nginx. Uh, which is going to be basically be a port of Nginx starting now, diverting across a different path. Now, what was weird is it had to do with how they were reporting CVEs. And this guy did not want to report the CVEs as nearly everybody else did. And the company said, no, let's go ahead and report this so people know what's going on. And there were some questions about the developer branches and some things might be patched before the CVEs. It almost sounded like the person contributing the code was almost trying to say something to the effect of um, that we don't want to make our software look like it's vulnerable. So we want to leave the CVEs out. It's almost like the same argument. Windows people will say Linux is so much more insecure. Look at how many CVEs. Well, the reason is there's so many more reported because it's open source. And so that seems to be what it is. So even if you go down and have a look at the comment section, we're going to boot it up today. But if you go back down and have a look at the comment section, what's going on here, what we actually see is a lot of people going, am I wrong? Or is Nginx wanting to include CVEs and the core developers not wanting to? Wait, what? And everyone's doing a double take on this. So it's very interesting. Uh, so research this just before you decide if you want to follow the free Nginx route or the Nginx route. And it boils down to Nginx route is being uh, maintained and dictated by a company. And to his point, he didn't like a non-coder making coding decisions. And that's really why he left the project itself. So it's a very interesting story to read into it. And uh, you can read a, a couple different uh, factors there. Oh, this is another article on the same thing. This had a lot more of the take from the uh, from the lead developer, who is Max and Uh This has a lot of his, and he's just kind of here talking about uh, this is really his core thing. Unfortunately, some new non-technical management at F5 recently decided they know better how to run open source projects. In particular, they decided to interfere with the security policy and uh, policy Nginx uses for years, ignoring the policy and the developer's position. So that's what he had. The other article we had is a lot more of the company's take. This article is a lot more of his take. So you can, I included both of them in the notes so that you can get a better idea. And now on to our chief article here in uh, the Linux news is we have yet another snap issue. And this is the command not found utility, which is in Ubuntu. So if you go and type something in in the terminal, uh, particularly, and you don't have the application installed, the command not found uses a local cache file on your computer to make a list of every possible command. And then if the application is installed, it says, hey, you can install it with this command. Well, the problem is, since everything Ubuntu is trying to default to Snap, the default behavior tells you how to install the Snap. Well, if an application does not exist, it will ignore that and just show you the repository version. But if an application doesn't exist and a malicious scammer comes in and says, wow, this application isn't there, let's go ahead and make a Snap version and include a little bit of malware... They can put it in there and then somebody will be coerced to install the snap version of a malicious package instead of the official repository package instead because this system, like everything else in Ubuntu, is trying to push snaps everywhere. And since we've already established on this channel 
many times that Snapcraft is more interested in bolstering its number, having a bigger store than in auditing the code. And they're relying on a, de- you know, trust the developer model instead of trust the code model. It opens the door up for more possible malware. So in this case, the Jupyter notebook was not available and a malicious person came in and uh, created an app, which was malicious Use the Jupyter Notebook name because it was not taken in the Snap repository and enabled people looking for this say, oh, it's not installed. Okay, let's do the pseudo app to install Jupyter Notebook. And then they install malware through the proprietary Snap store. (laughs) Very fascinating. So that is what it is. It just boils down to is every package in the system available as a Snap or not? And are those snaps specifically there? So um, Sabu had said, you know, the first thing he does if he's giving an Ubuntu-based distribution is somebody is delete that package uh, because it does raise some issues in that. And of course, you can go in, you can look at the the database links there as well. It's in varlib command not found uh, commands uh, But that's really what it is. Very interesting backdoor for a malicious person and. Uh, in the notes here, it did say that something only the effect of something like, is it 10 or 20 percent of packages? It might have been another story I was reading about this. Uh, yes, I do actually read multiple stories about these. Here it is. Researchers discovered up to 26 percent of commands linked to apt tools may be exposed to impersonation. So that would mean roughly 74 percent of packages have a snap version and the other 26 are just not there, and so it opens the door for malicious actors to populate the Snap Store with malicious versions of these applications and get their name in on that. So, very fascinating indeed. If you want to help support the channel, we do have a Locals page. We are over there at switchtolinux.locals.com. We did just release the text version of the short story for the month. I did not do the audiobook version yet because my voice is still not up 200% par. Hopefully, Hopefully we will be able to get that out for next weekend, but I'm going to completely, it's going to completely depend on is my voice completely back or not, because those files are ultimately going to be used in the production audiobook, which will be for sale probably sometime this summer. If you are not a supporter and you want to get a copy of that book, that will be made available eventually, but uh, the supporters will get a chance to read all those stories or listen to them all now on Locals, switch to linux.locals.com. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.